Did you know that the Gettysburg Address was not the main event on the day of the cemetery dedication? Well, if not, you're going to find out today. So let's get started. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Virtual History 360. I'm Mr. Wade, and we are talking about the Gettysburg Address today. But I guess we, we should start with why Abraham Lincoln was there in the first place. You see, in the summer of 1863, the small Pennsylvania town of Gettysburg became the site of the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. You can check out my video on Dan Sickles and the Peach Orchard by clicking here, I believe somewhere up there. Well, when armies commanded by George Meade and Robert E. Lee clashed on those three days in July, some Gettysburg townspeople took refuge in their cellars. It was a miracle, some would say, that only one local resident perished in the conflict, one civilian. It happened to be a young woman who was felled by a bullet while baking bread. Well, her name was Jenny Wade. Now, I haven't found a connection, but we share our last name, and we are both from Pennsylvania. So I would guess that we are related somehow. I just haven't figured it out yet. All right, back to the story. In the battle's bloody aftermath, Gettysburg residents tended the wounded and dying, welcomed soldiers' relatives, shipped out the dead, rebuilt shattered barns and bullet-pierced homes. In November, they extended hospitality to thousands more. The people who came to witness the dedication of the new soldiers' cemetery and to get a glimpse of their president. President Lincoln was the special guest of David Wills, the 32-year-old lawyer whose house faced the town square. Wills had invited Lincoln to give concluding remarks at the dedication ceremony following the principal address by Edward Everett. Early on Dedication Day, President Lincoln visited part of the battlefield near a seminary with Secretary of State William Seward. Later that morning, Lincoln rode in a large procession from the Wills House about one mile to the cemetery dedication site. A resident on the parade route reported that Lincoln bowed, quote, with a modest smile and uncovered his head to the throng of women, men, and children that greeted him from the doors and the windows." Unquote. When the event began, there were about 10,000 to 20,000 people gathered around Cemetery Hill, the site of heavy Confederate bombardment during the battle itself. But what about the main event? Remember, Lincoln wasn't the headliner but rather just the closing remarks. The main address was delivered by, the man I mentioned earlier, Edward Everett. Why him? Well, he was a nationally famous speaker. The official program listed Everett as the oration speaker and Lincoln as the giver of dedica dedicatory, that's a hard word, dedicatory remarks. Everett's speech, which lasted for over two hours, was expected to run long, although it caused the crowd to grow a little restless. When it was finally Lincoln's turn, he only spoke for about two minutes. Some newspapers were not even prepared to transcribe before he finished, as he was expected to speak for a long time, as his reputation has given. Now, did you know, did you know that we, actually, we have actual video footage of Lincoln delivering the speech? Check this out. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. And we have come here to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that the nation might live. It is altogether fitting that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it cannot forget what they 
did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. Thank you. Okay, so that video wasn't from 1863, but that was the actual speech. What did people think of the speech in Lincoln's day? According to a New York Times article, his delivery was interrupted five times by applause and greeted with, quote, long continued applause, unquote, at its conclusion. Outside of Gettysburg, the speech received mixed reviews from newspapers of the day, which were even more highly partisan than they are today. Northern papers both praised and attacked it, while southern papers, predictably, denounced it. Various versions of the speech's text were carried by newspapers across the country. Pennsylvania Governor Andrew Curtin, who sat on the speaker's platform that day, enthused, quote, he said, It was so impressive! It was the common remark of everybody, such a speech as they said it was. Everett and all went up and congratulated the president, shaking him by the hand." Unquote. Everett even wrote Lincoln a brief note the next day, requesting a copy of the speech and covering it with praise, saying, Permit me also to express my great admiration of the thoughts expressed by you with such eloquent simplicity and appropriateness at the consecration of the cemetery. I should be glad if I could flatter myself that I came as near to the central idea of the occasion in two hours as you did in two minutes." Unquote. Lincoln graciously replied, he said, In our respective parts yesterday, you could not have been excused to make a short address, nor I a long one. I am pleased to know that in your judgment, the little I did say was not entirely a failure. After the cemetery dedication, Lincoln returned to the Wills house for a late lunch, followed by a public reception. There he met John L. Burns, the old man of Gettysburg, the feisty 69-year-old Gettysburg shoemaker who already had become famous for picking up his musket from the War of 1812 and joining the Union troops at the beginning on July 1st, receiving several wounds, but obviously surviving. Lincoln walked down Baltimore Street with Burns to the last event of the day at the Gettysburg Presbyterian Church. Here they heard a speech by Charles Anderson, Lieutenant Governor of Ohio. The president then hurried off to the train station and his duties back in Washington. So let me ask you, do you think that Lincoln captured the meaning of the moment of history? Do you think this was one of the greatest speeches of history? I do, but I want to hear from you. Leave a comment below letting me know what you think. And of course, while you're there, go ahead and hit that like button for me so YouTube knows to share this video with everyone. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You know, if that button's red, let's turn it gray. Also, be sure to check out these other videos like the ones you see to the side over here. I have other history videos like U.S. history and world history, as well as civics, you know, U.S. government. I even have videos shot in 360 that you can look all the way around. I know you're going to like them, so check them out. All right, so for Virtual History 360, I'm Mr. Wade. I'll see you next time.